Daddy, this is rubbish. No, darling. No, it isn't. Because in episode 6, we got... What the fuck? <laughs> this is One Pet at a Time. The Extreme Edition. On the last episode of Extreme or One Pet at a Time, we continued pushing for our Song of the Elves requirements, figured out that you could two-tick forestry routes, acquired Lumberjack in the least efficient way possible, completed the entire Sins of the Father questline, and most importantly for our current pet grind of getting the beaver, we got from level 82 to level 90 woodcutting, crucially with no beaver in sight. When I say nothing makes me more erect than an insatiable bloodfeld, honestly, I mean it. Look at that thick boy. Oh, back shots on that would be beautiful. And Slayer XP doesn't help. That, well, doesn't hurt, I guess. <laughs> Go on, show me that XP drop. Oh, oh. And 1650 total. And a dark totem base. And an insult head. Oh, they're things of beauty, aren't they? Superiors. Whoever came up with superior creatures was a uh, a good person indeed. Oh, 73. 73. Oh, nice. 89 combat and 63, uh, what's it, uh, defense. Really flying through the levels. I love barrage tasks so, so much. Um... And yeah, Blood Velders is really one of the best ones because of their 170 hit points per one. Hoping to get a Dust Devil task soon so I can start making some money, but enjoying the slow grind at the minute. The builders are having a mad one outside, but big level coming up, which is... Which is... Oh my god. <laughs> level 70 attack, which is pretty big. Means we can equip a whip when we, uh, when we get one. Although, the plan I don't think is ever really going to be to use a whip, because I think I will almost certainly have the Blade of Sailor before getting the whip. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're headed. Um, I'm only planning at the moment on doing Slayer up to level 69, uh, because then I can do Monkey Manus 2, uh, which I'm doing for the agility XP and for the option to make the uh, Zenart jewellery in the future because that's one huge upgrade that I can do um, without rolling any pets because obviously there's no pet from uh, from Demonic Gorillas. So yeah, it's a, it's a kind of little bit of a side quest we're going on at the moment um, but it is all in aid of getting to that Song of the Elves uh, completion sooner rather than later. And here is level 60. Why does it always happen? Every time I start recording, my scimitar just becomes like I've got a bronze scimitar. There we go, level 67 Slayer. Only two more levels to go until Monkey Madness 2. Right, I believe, so I'll get a task, 127 hours, oh, I think that's my first one of those, that's cool. Um, but I believe, I think this is a handy task, because don't you need a nose peg for that? Um, so what I'm going to do is, it must be under unlocks, I'm, oh, oh, I thought it was 300, no, no, oh that's so sad, right, so what, I need a nose peg to do this task now, that's so bleak, oh no, and I don't have the coins on me, oh just kill me now. So we did loads and loads of gaming over the weekend. And I got not just 92, not just 93, but 94 woodcutting. And we're only 300k from 95, so we'll keep persevering on with that. But I think for now, we're probably going to keep pushing towards those Monkey Madness 2 uh, requirements, which is... Oh shit, I didn't realize I needed 70 crafting for it. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, but yeah, we'll keep going towards 69 Slayer at the moment. And there is level 81 strength and 90 combat. Very nice. Is there anything we can get with that? I feel like there is. Uh, no, maybe it's 85 for like Neve and Pest Control. Uh, not Pest Control, what's it called? Uh, oh, I forgot. Oh, uh, Dream Mentor. Um, but I don't think there's anything for 90. Um, but yeah, still pushing on.
So I've decided that to get the 70 crafting requirement for Monkey Man is 2, and also I really need a power army, because <laughs> I still don't have one. Um, I should get 77 magic, super glass make, um, but I just wanted to see which XP, which method is better, this or um, the library with the books. Um, so if I just add that to canvas, we should be able to see that. Um, so this is 70k from just the Owl King, if I deposit the coins then we're, well I had slightly less coins than that, so we're probably talking about 130-140k from this. Um, so if we go to the library, well, that's the that's the number to beat, so uh, right, I'm, I'll see you back at the library shortly and we'll see where we get to. So we got up to 116k XP per hour at the library, but I was using so many super energy potions and the XP was worse, so I just kind of called it a day pretty quickly on that and we're back to the mage training arena. Okay, there is a third method that I just thought of. Now I'm past 65 Slayer, I could probably just burst Dust Devils um, like for probably about break even GP, but it'll be a pretty chill method and should, I think, be pretty high mage XP per hour. So uh, here are our two main accounts, and uh, we'll see how we get on. Okay, so the XP per hour here is about 130k, so pretty similar to the uh, the Alk room, the Alchemist's room at uh, Mage Training Arena. Um, but is this more effort? It's hard to decide. It's kind of more AFK in the moments it's AFK, um, but it's kind of more brain intensive, having to lure them and stuff. Um, I need to basically do some calcs, I think, on what the profit per hour here is. If it's really high, then I'll probably stick to it. If it's not or negative, then I'll probably go back to MTA. Okay, so we spent about 140k on runes, and we got back just in pure alky boys. Uh, so that stuff we can just convert straight to cash, or is cash already. 280k so we're basically doubling our money by bursting these dust devils so I think this is probably gonna have to be the way uh, so we should be making about 500k GP per hour just from the Alks that's never minding uh, these runes and the mithril bars as well um, yes yeah, so I think we'll stick with this I guess oh I guess another benefit of this method is I'm actually getting hit points XP as well which is actually pretty useful for me because um, I've got some pretty tricky quest bosses coming up in Monkey Madness 2 and uh, and Song of the Elves and what's the uh, what's the desert one called? Oh, I can't remember. Beneath Cursed Sands, that's it. Right, there is 75 magic, which is actually where we're going to finish things because unbeknownst to me, the Wizard's Mind Bomb actually boosts you by 3. Not by one. I thought it was one, but it's three. So I can actually use Super Glass Make fairly effectively from here. Uh, give myself two two minutes per mind bomb, which is more than enough to use all my uh, uh, all my uh, seaweed that I've got. Um, so yeah, this should be uh, pretty much uh, pretty much done, and we can start uh, on getting some sand, which uh, because of my restrictions takes a fucking long time. <laughs> Look at that, the coins just randomly added up to nine 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 nine. What are the odds of that? Cheeky little uh fifty prayer coming in. I just found these in the bank and thought why not get the level fifty? There it is. Uh cool. So we've we've now moved our house to uh Yanil. Uh whoops, I need to set my settings so that I appear outside. Teleport outside, yep. Yeah. Um, and then I just fill up from the sand pit here, and I'm just going to time how long one of these runs takes, and then we'll have our uh, buckets per of sand per hour figure down. So we can do about 85 to 90 runs per hour, uh, which means we're getting about 2,300-ish buckets of sand per hour, which is a far cry from what I'd be getting. To what what I'd be getting if I could three tick sandstone um, at you know the sand grinder thing, um, which is what I would normally do, and I'm not averse to doing that. But the restrictions obviously mean because I haven't got the roll uh, the rock golem yet, and I'm currently going for the beaver, I can't actually do any mining right now at all. Um, so because of that fact. Um, 
I can't do that. So I've got to get buckets of sand the boring way because there's no mining pet rolled at the sand pit. Um, if you're kind of new to the series and wondering how I got 69 mining, I've got a mix of it from free-to-play iron ore, which doesn't roll a pet, and also the uh, the mining component of the uh, Guardian sort of rift mini game. Um, but yeah, this is kind of where we're at. <laughs> this is an incredibly boring way to get the sand. Um, but it's at least reasonably effective, so I can train crafting relatively well. Um, I just need to work out how much I need to get 70 crafting. It probably shouldn't be too much, because it's like 260k XP or something, which is really not that much. Um, so yeah, I'll, make, I'll do these calculations, and uh, I'll get that much, I guess. Okay, so I actually only need to get... I've done the maths, about just under 2,700 buckets of sand, so that's really not going to take too long, about an hour. Uh, then I need to just do the super glass bank, blow them into whatever they're called, empty lantern lenses or whatever, and that should, in theory, get us to 70. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty big goal as well, because I think that just is flat the level for uh, amulet power, so I can make that. Um, and yeah, it's quite nice uh, just getting crafting up generally. It just puts us closer to everything we're going to need to get. Because one of the major goals that I'm going to be going for alongside the uh, young Hunleth uh, pet when we get there is I'm going to be trying to get the Zenite jewellery ahead of the next grind so I can kind of have a necklace of anguish, etc. Um, ahead of any grinds that I'm going to do with the sort of blade or the bofa because they're going to be huge upgrades and don't roll a pet so there's no reason not to go for them at the earliest opportunity so yeah crafting is going to be massive for that so since i hosted rs chronicles uh last week there has been a kind of uptake in comments on the videos kind of where people don't quite understand the rule set and you know that kind of thing which is totally fine because i don't necessarily explain the rules um and the loopholes etc in every single video so I thought it'd be worthwhile kind of doing a kind of comprehensive explanation here about um, the idea around the series what we're trying to achieve um, what the series sort of means to me in terms of the word extreme and um, the loopholes that we've kind of come up with so far why farm is an exception this kind of thing so uh, yeah, I think I think this should help kind of clarify some things for some people who maybe aren't as familiar with the series as others. So, there is only one rule to the series, which is once a pet roll has been made, that pet must be achieved before any activity that rolls a different pet can be undertaken. Now, farming and the uh, tangle group is an exception to this. So, why have I excluded farming? So the simple answer is because my main Iron Man, um, LSE, got hacked for about seven bill, maybe three or four months ago. Um, you know, <laughs> relatively traumatic event. Um, and I wanted to uh, pick up a new and fun way to play the game. Um, so obviously you need farming on an Iron Man to play the game at all, especially to go hunting for boss pets and this kind of thing. So I would have had to get the farming pet very, very early on in the series. I think likely as the very first thing that I did, if I was being entirely true to the one pet at a time thing. Um, so the first thing I would have done was I'd have just got the requirements for Fossil Island, gone to Seaweed, and I'd have just sat at Seaweed for, you know, nine months, logging out and logging in to get the Tangled Group, and then I could have just carried on the series. Um, but as I say... I got hacked on my main Iron Man and wanted to play a new format and have a lot of fun playing the game and logging out of seaweed for months and months and months wouldn't have really achieved that. So um, here we are treating the farming pet as passive. Um, if you want to pretend <laughs> that the year is 2024 and I actually have the Tangle Root pet or Tangle Groot, I can't remember what it's called, um, and I got it first and I've got 80,000 giant seaweed in the bank, then you know, go for it. Um, but I don't actually think that the series is worse in any way for treating farming as passive because farming is passive. Um, so I don't really feel too bad about it. I think I would have just been playing exactly the same, but I'd have 80,000 seaweed in the bank and a, uh, and a tangle group and that would be the only difference. But I'd have wasted, you know, nine months of potentially having fun playing the series. So 
yeah, I don't feel too bad about that. Um, and I don't think many other people do, to be fair either. I've not really had any complaints about that. Um, so the other thing is the word extreme in the title, right? Quite a lot of people have said various things about the series don't seem too extreme to them. Things like using um, alternative accounts or um, some of the loopholes, which I'm going to get to later. Um, on in this explanation so the reason I've got extreme in the title is not really to compare it to Limpwort series right it's to differentiate my series to the original one pet at a time series novelty um, so in his series he had a kind of system of forfeits and, and other ways to get out of going for pets consistently one at a time um, so for example and I'm just doing this from memory um, he could stop going for a pet at level 99. Um, so, you know, if he got 99 fishing and didn't have the heron already, he could just move on to the next pet, right? Um, and also he had a, a, a kind of different forfeit, which was at level 80. If he hadn't got the pet, he could move on as long as he got rid of all the supplies that he got whilst doing that skill. Um, so, oh yeah, and he could also... Um, move on if he hit the uh, the rate for a pet from a boss so you know like uh, uh, I think you know General Grador is 5000 uh, KC um, to try and get um, like that's the rate for the pet so if he hit 5000 KC he could just move on right um, so that's one one thing um, that I don't want to do in my series I don't want to have these sort of forfeits and ways to get out of going for a pet I want to stick at it right so the word extreme to me is mostly to differentiate from that series so taking the same idea but a step further similar to what Limpwort did with the one chunk series right he asked why I'm not gonna do that for obvious reasons why not you know what and so did I. Why stop at 99 or the pet rate? If it's truly one pet at a time, then you shouldn't be able to move on until you have the pet. Regardless of the level or the kill count, you just keep going. Um, so that's what one pet at a time is to me, and is why you've seen me go you know, 28 mil XP to get the Phoenix, um, and why I'm currently uh, still going for the Beaver into the you know mid-90s. Um, when I just had to chop one archie tree for big chompy bird hunting, right? So one log meant that I'm now in the mid 90s of woodcutting and, you know, there's no end in sight unless I get the beaver, right? Um, so if I'd been following Novelty's uh, rule set, I'd have got to, le I'd have chopped the archie tree, got to level 80, binned all the logs that I got and, you know, moved on. Um, but I don't really want to do it like that. I wanted to chop the Achoo tree and that's it. I'm locked to the beaver and I can't do anything else until I get it. So, you know, that's why we are where we are. Um, this is kind of the extreme version of his series, not really to be compared to Limpwort in terms of the sort of length or obscurity of the grinds that he's going for. Um, it's very unlikely that I'm going to get stuck on one pet for like two years in the same way that he... Um, is stuck doing the construction cape at the moment, you know, rest in peace him. Um, but yeah, uh, this is obviously nothing against Novelty series, you know, he, he was a major inspiration in me wanting to do this series, um, and his videos were great when he was making them, um, and I just wanted to take it a step further, so yeah, um, here we are. Um, and the next and last topic is loopholes. So, I love loopholes in RuneScape series. Um, I believe that RuneScape series are at their absolute best when the rule set is simple. Um, just one or two rules, preferably one. Um, loopholes are just kind of the fun things that shake loose from having simple rules, right? Um, so, you know, in Swampletics, he pays billions and billions of GP for people to scout. Um, implings for him so he could get the rune crossbow um he also try like experimented with trying to get people to push jackals through fairy rings so that he could kill them in 
Mauritania, even though jackals don't spawn in Mauritania. You know, he obviously couldn't do that by himself, so that required alternative accounts, blah, blah, blah. Obviously a loophole, right? Um, but it was interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, Limpwer himself, you know, the most extreme of the extreme uh, content creators, was obviously using alternative accounts to um, speed up his uh, cowfight queen grind, right? He could have done it without that, but he didn't. And he, and it was right to do so because it didn't violate anything in his series, right? So I love those aspects of both of those series um, because kind of I think the best series, you, you set yourself some fairly arbitrary rules at the start of your series um, before you've really thought it through and then you try to absolutely max out what you can possibly do within those restrictions. So, um, you know, Settled's rule was essentially stay in Mauritania and Limpwort's um, rule was essentially complete the chunk. Um, any loophole that they can find that doesn't contravene those basic rules is totally fair to take advantage of. So when this is applied to my own series, Extreme One Pet at a Time, the rule is essentially avoid rolling for other pets. That's the only thing that would break the rule set is going for multiple pets at a time. Um, so this is why for me, I'm happy to abuse the loopholes that have um, that happened to not be covered by my initial rule set, right? Um, so there's two major loopholes that I've discovered so far. Um, so there's playing mini games such as Guardians of the Rift or Temporos to train runecrafting and fishing, and then simply not trading in the rewards. Um, as at the reward turning in stage is when you roll the pet, right? Um, so there's no pets being rolled until that point. So if I just don't do it, I'm not rolling any pets and I'm not breaking my series rule. Um, this kind of also helps the series move at a faster pace as well because I can do these things in the background um, and when I decide to eventually go for the Abyssal Protector for example I'll already have 4,000 rolls stacked up rather than spending four weeks stacking those rolls up um, so in terms of like the enjoyability of the series I'll be able to knock out those 4,000 rolls in one day um, which will make for like an epic video or live stream, right? Um, the second major loophole um, that my friend Phantomine thought of, which has been slightly more controversial than the others, um, than the other one, than the other one, is training skills in free to play because there's no pets in free to play, so you cannot roll for the pet in free to play. Um, this has been controversial, but it's also extremely limited in terms of its use um, of what I can actually use it for to benefit me. Um, the only benefit that I've managed to get out of it on the series is training my mining for quest requirements. So I can't get so so the main thing you actually train mining for on an Iron Man is to get sandstone for. Um, for buckets of sand to train your crafting but I can't do that because sandstone is a uh, a pay to play um, pay to play item right um, so the only thing I can really use it for is mining iron ore to get level 70 mining for Song of the Elves so really quest requirements are kind of the only thing I can use it for and really only that one because um, there's no other really any good training methods in free to play um, that are faster than other pay to play methods I can do without rolling the pet. Um, so that's kind of the only thing I can get out of playing in free to play. Um, so once I get 70 mining, which will be happening very soon, I'm all tapped out of things I can do in free to play. That's that loophole sort of closed, at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, so in the grand scheme of uh, the time invested in the series, um, and what's going to be invested in the series, it's kind of a, a drop in the ocean, right? Once I'm 150 Zuck kill count, uh, because I wanted to get an Infernal Cape, or I'm 9,000 Vetion kill count dry of um, their pets, um, I'm hardly going to be sweating over the authenticity of my series, right? Because I'd used a loophole to get 70 mine in, you know, right at the start of the series. Um we're still very much in the extremely early game of this account. Um, so I feel like it's a bit of a can't see the forest for the trees kind of thing. Um, I see why people feel it matters. 
right now. Um, but it will sort of be long forgotten in another half dozen episodes. Um, so, you know, if I can make better videos by using the loophole and saving myself 30 hours of AFK mining, then I'll do it because I'm not breaking my own series rule as discussed. And if it just makes for a better video, right? You don't have to watch me AFKing for uh, 30 hours doing Guardians of the Rift fragments, which is just boring and I could have done it, but why bother? Um, when the loophole exists. Um, the third loophole that I explored, um, but haven't really talked about, it, but well, because it didn't work, <laughs> was doing um, entry mode Tombs of a Masket to get the Fang and the Lightbearer um, without rolling for the pet. Um, I thought maybe the pet might not roll in entry mode because, you know, it grays it out alongside the, the staff and this kind of thing um, in the menu. Um, but unfortunately it does roll the pet so that doesn't work but that could have been a fun little loophole to get me some really powerful items without rolling for uh, the Guardians of the Rift uh, not Guardians of the Rift, uh, Tombs of a Mascot pet right um, so yeah those are sort of the three loopholes that I've thought of so far, two of them worked one of them didn't um, and for the fourth loophole idea I kind of want to pass it over to you guys um, can you think of any hair-brained, out-of-the-box solutions to uh, problems that I might face on this series? You know, are there any good skilling methods that don't roll the pets? Are there any ways to get PVM items that might traditionally roll a pet? Um, but, you know, you can think of a way of doing it without rolling for it. Um, one thought I had was dying as you kill Jad. However, that obviously kind of does the opposite um, thing it would roll for the pet because you killed Jad but wouldn't give you the fire cape you know so if you could swap that around and get the fire cape without getting the kill credit on Jad for example that could that, that that's the kind of useful thing that could be good um so you know let me know in the comments if you can think of um anything that could be useful for me you know it doesn't have to be getting pvm items or skilling it could be anything that you know I might not think of as possible but is um so yeah let me know in the comments and i'll definitely be reading them all and, and giving them a go if you can come up with anything interesting um but yeah we, we, with all my thoughts out of the way you know that took a long time it's about 15 minutes um but hopefully it wasn't too boring because um you know yeah it's just me talking which is basically all these videos are anyway um but yeah if you um if you can think of anything let me know and yeah with all that said let's crack back on with the episode Right, I've got both of the kids with me, so if anyone uh, if anyone shouts, that that be why. Um, so I've finished getting my 2,700 buckets of sand, and now it's time to buy, I reckon, probably about 20, 20 wizards mine bombs. Um, that should be enough to get us to the uh, 70 crafting that we need. Here we go with our first, uh, first lot of molten glass on the account. Oh. Feels good to be. This feels like real RuneScape play, to be honest. I've got Stella with me. She's in the jumper roof. You can hear small amount of music. It's a little device that she sits in, and she just goes mental in there, which is good. Keeps her busy. Keeps me gaming. Um, but yeah, this is nice, and the crafting XP is fucking quick, isn't it? Oh, this is good. Oh, this. I, when I was doing this by hand before. This was fucking brutal, but this is really, really nice. And I'm definitely going to be picking the glass up because my method to get the uh, sand is so shit. <laughs> 66 crafting and the first level from blowing glass. Oh, I, I can make some blue dragon hide stuff now. That's pretty cool. Um, I absolutely love using super glass mate. It's just something about it just feels so incredibly satisfying um but i'm pretty sure we should be good on the uh on the xp to get to 70 from this stuff okay so we've finished all of our buckets of sand and we've got 4400 molten glass which should be more than enough to get to level 70 uh, i think though i might go back to slayer for a bit and just knock out 69 because i can pretty easily do that on mobile and i don't think you guys necessarily Need to see me getting 67, 68, 69 and level 70 crafting. Um, so yeah, I'll probably do that on mobile and carry on with the Slayer. 
Okay, here we are in free to play, and you can tell that because we are dealing with and trying to uh, beat out the bots. But we are 2 XP from level 70 mining. And there it is, level 70, which is the level that we need to do Song of the Elves. And we've managed to get all that without ever rolling the rock golem. So that's the last bit of uh, mining XP that we need to get um, until we eventually go for the, uh, the rock golem. Um, but I think that's a little while off, and I'm going to be happy now to never go back to free-to-play, because the bots are fucking incessant. So I made some uh, agility potions last night, and we're now embarking on our first ever Blue Dragons task, which is pretty good, because I need dragon bones, and badly, because I really want to get 60 and eventually 70 prayer at some point, because chivalry and piety are just so much better to use than ultimate strength and uh, incredible reflexes, is that it? Um... But yeah, this is, a, this is a good task to have, but it's going to take a long time. Um, but the more... Uh, quick, what a rubbish set of DDSs. Um, I don't think I can use Insult Dragon Heads, though, right? Because they're um, they're like level 90 magic to use them. Um, so they won't be useful now, but they'll be useful in the future. But yeah, the Dragon Bones are going to be massive. 64 defense. One more level until we can do uh, the... Knight, the King's, uh, what's it called? The one with piety. <laughs> King's Ransom, is that it? <laughs> I think so. So we're at the baby black dragons right now, and we are about to get level 68 Slayer, which is just the one level away from Monkey Madness 2. Uh, we've got all of the glass bank that we need for 70 crafting, so we should be finishing that quest up relatively quickly. Um, we just need to get, what, 63k Slayer XP, which if we get the right tasks, can be done pretty quick, but if we get the wrong tasks, we'll take ages. Um, so yeah, good luck to me. Oh, that is exactly the kind of task we want. Almost max size as well, so 177 blood bells, that should be what? Or about 30k Slayer XP by itself, and it'll be really quick per hour, so that is beautiful. Can we get anything of interest from this bootalicious beast? Oh, Clue Scroll's pretty cool, and the uh, Dark Totem's nice as well. Oh, pretty good actually. <laughs> not an imbued heart, but not bad. Oh, I got uh, 65 defense, literally didn't even notice. I must have got that a while ago. <laughs> I'm playing like four accounts at once, and I'm really struggling to uh, keep track of everything. Um, but yeah, 65 defense, and that means we've got all the requirements for King's Ransom. And there we are at the end of the Blood Veil task. 34,000 XP, which is crazy. More than half the way to 69 Slayer. Oh, that was such a good task. More like that, please. 756 blood runes from that task as well. That's pretty crazy. They will stack up in the long term. Okay, I could really do with a good task, another bursting one. Dust devils will be nice. Eh. Ah, it's just, it's just okay, isn't it? How do you get arc light? Do you just use ancient shards on a, on a dark light? No, not that I can... Or is Arc like 70? It was Arc like 75. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, well. Uh, right. Guess we're doing some uh, Greater Demons with a Dragon Scimitar, then. So, it took a... F Whoops. It took a few hours, but... Here is level 70 crafting, which is uh, the one, well, the second final requirement we need for Song of the... El no, not Song of the Elves. I guess I do need it for Song of the Elves if I need to craft the crystal stuff afterwards. Um, but no, the main thing I need it for is Monkey Madness 2. Uh, and aside from that, we need 6k Slayer XP and then we are good to go. And we can also now create ourselves for the first time on an account this old, I know, a Diamond Amulet, which we can then turn into... an Amulet of Power. And that is the first one we've got on the account... God, that took a, uh, a long time, but we should have the glory before we know it, because I'm going to kind of stick with crafting, I think, in the long run. 
um, just kind of keep chipping away at it over time. Here is the important level, level 69 Slayer, which is the level we need for Monkey Madness 2. I think the only other thing I need to do is Enlightened Journey, potentially. Yeah, so I've got all the skills now. I just need to do Enlightened Journey and unlock the Gnome Stronghold route. But other than that, we're good to go. Oh my god, you need Willow Branches to do this to do this quest and you need to get them for a fucking willow tree that you've grown so uh, right I'm gonna have to plant some uh, willow trees all around um, hopefully I've got one planted already but I really don't think I do I kind of stopped planting willows a little while ago in favor of um, maples and yews but hopefully on this farm run we're gonna uh, find a willow tree somewhere Okay, I'm not exactly sure how to do this, but let's see. Is it pre-check health? No. Is it post-check health? Oh, you are fucking joking. You gotta wait for the branches to grow. Fuck off. Well, I guess I better go around and check the health on all my trees, and then what? I need 12? So come back in, what, and they take five minutes each to grow. And I've got four, so come back in 15 minutes. Right, once we wait for uh, for that to grow, we may as well just start the quest, right? We only need the branches in the second half. So let's get cracking with Enlightened Journey. Okay, we've got our 12 willow branches after many, many hours of waiting around. But here we go. Uh, no, we don't. Oh, maybe we do. Right, and that should be the quest completed. It is, indeed. God, you actually get a decent amount of XP for that, for, for like, how easy it is. Um, right, I think... I think I might need to um, go back to Entrana to unlock new places. Yeah. Okay, I uh, just need one regular log though, so that shouldn't be too bad. Okay, and that's the gnome shortcut done as well. So that should now be everything we need for Monkey Madness 2. Uh, where is it? There it is, um, and I think the only item that I need to get is a lemon. So let's go and grab that as well. On the latest episode of the Quest Help as a Joke, uh, this just makes this quest brain dead. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure I can still fall, and it's not picking the right route for me. But the fact that you don't even have to think about where to run is just <laughs> wild. I can't believe this plugin is allowed. I really don't think I could have gone wrong more times than I have. <laughs> I've got like every I've not got one right first time this whole time. I've gone wrong eight times in a row. Fully out of super energy, so I'm just walking around. Oh, this has been painful. Oh, and there is the sixth satchel without getting caught once. Very, very nice. Right, let's go get caught on purpose and then we can go back to the boat and uh we're all good. Oh, that was so good. I've never done that before. I've always got caught at least once. So uh, doing it with no captures was good. I used like corner, like the corner, like going around the corner method, which was so nice. Um, and it took like no time at all to do that. I mean, literally, oh, there's one. I was about to say, I literally cannot find these things. I've been l running around for about five minutes trying to find these things. Oh my God, that was painful. I potted up and I was 98 strength, so it took me six minutes to find another one. That's wild. Oh, that's pretty handy. Got myself some uh, easy tier rewards. Okay, I've got Stella sat on my lap, so I'm doing this one handed. Um, Stella's my uh, 14, 14 months old, 13 months old, I think. Uh, she's just sat on my lap whilst we're going through this quest. <coughs> So, uh, one-handed demonic gorilla's done with crap stats. If anyone should be uh, throwing Neve against the wall and putting her on her knees, it should probably be me. If I do say so myself. Um, but right, I think that's a transition point in the quest. So I think after I've done this, I can teleport out and get back to it with a long-range crystal bow is going to be the method, I think. Um, so yeah, what a sad time. Bye-bye, Neve. Okay, so we're going to try this range only. I've got a very low range level for this, but I'm hoping that the crystal bow is going to carry me. Um, oh, good start. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we do. Food's not great. 
yeah, no range parts, so this might not go well. We might have to try and convert some sort of melee strategy because I've got way better stats and gear for that. But we'll see. Okay, this should actually be fairly free with this method. So I just attack, let him drag me, wait a tick or two, and then run back. So this should be fairly easy with this setup, to be fair. Wow, that was actually <laughs> incredibly free. I was expecting that to be so much worse. Um, wow. Wow. Okay, right. Well, that's Monkey Manners 2 basically done then. Epic. Epic. Right, here we go. Let's grab this XP. The main thing we actually want from this is not the access to the Demonic Gorillas, but the Agility XP that we're about to get. So, let's grab that. 60k Agility XP. Oh! That is a beautiful sight. 50k Hunter, 50k Thieving, and 80k Agility to take us up to 70 Slayer. Sorry, 80k Slayer to take us up to 70 Slayer. Oh, that is nice. But the main thing, 68 Agility and about 110k XP to go until we get 70 Agility as well, which is the, one of the last requirements we need for Song of the Elves. So... That's pretty nice. 1675 total as well. What a nice quest to get done. Now, I believe if we speak to our buddy Duke over here, similar to uh, Monkey Man as one, he's going to give us some combat XP. So let's uh, speak to him. Uh, magic is definitely what we need the most um, because we I really want to get 82 ready for Song of the Elves. So we'll grab the magic XP. Simple as you like. Oh, he can be a bit quicker about it, could he? There we go. 50k magic gets us up to 76, and this will get us a bit further towards 77. And I have not forgot, after killing that demonic gorilla, we also got the uh, easy combat diary. So here we go. I'm here to talk about combat achievements. I think I've completed a tier. Here we go. Go on then. Little Gommel's Hill, Trollheim Teleport is nice. Antique Lamp, think that can go in anything, so we'll put it in Herblore and get ourselves level 68 Herblore. Oh, we're going crazy right now with the levels. Um, yeah, exciting times. Right, two more agility levels and two more Herblore levels until we can do Song of the Elves. So I think we will leave it there. We got a huge amount of progress this week. We got so much wood cutting XP, even though I did most of it off screen, so you probably didn't see too much of it. It was about two and a half mil more, like three mil wood cutting XP, which you know took a while in itself. Got the uh, Slayer levels up, did the quest. Um, yeah, it was a lot of progress, even though it didn't really feel like it. Um, took a long time. You know, even things like getting the seventy crafting took, you know, like five hours just to just to sort of gather the supplies and 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 blow the glass etc um so yeah quite a lot of progress this week uh only four more levels to go until we have all the requirements of song of the elves um i'm planning to get the agility through two further quests um and the herb law should kind of come by itself i've got quite a lot of herbs banked now again um, this stack being the main one, but you know, we've got a nice amount of cadentines, the irrits are starting to pick up. Um, so yeah, we should be able to get 70 in both of those next week. And if I can do the quest, that would be ideal. Um, but I know I've got a, a lot of big quest lines to do to get the agility XP. Um, I've got to do, you know, almost basically the whole desert one and the whole my arms one, which also, um, involves, uh, what's, what is it? It's got some weird requirement on it, which I need, which which really fucks me over. Um, but yeah, um, got got a lot of quests to do to get the agility levels, and um, the herb law kind of is is time gated. So we'll see. Um, but we're getting there, I would say. While we're here, I'd like to give a big shout out to the channel members for supporting me and kind of helping me uh, keep making these videos and uh, keeping the wife off my back so if you want to join them and get a shout out here as well as uh, help out on the series that would be great uh, but the names are at the moment Avery Fields, IT Warrior, Eddie Mayer, Shocked Thief, Mitchell Nunley and DJ Focus. Um, thanks a lot guys for the uh, for the support but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll uh, 
See you next time. Bye.